Now he spells out five of these woes specifically. Will you listen to him? Verse 6. Now, shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. How long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. And that apparently has to do with signing a pledge. It's one thing to buy property and pay for it. It's another thing to take it by force. And this first woe is a taunting proverb against Babylon because they were seizing by force that which was not theirs as a nation. And this is God's taunting proverb against this nation for wanting more and taking that which does not belong to them. You see, God has made it today that man by the sweat of his brow is going to make his living. And friends, if you're not earning your living by the sweat of your brow, somebody else is doing it for you because you can't get it any other way. And Babylon's way was that they wanted somebody else to do the work, and they by force would take it. And that is the first woe. God says, I'll judge you for that. And he wants you to know that he was just and righteous when he did it also. Verse 7, Shall they not rise up suddenly? That shall bite thee and awake that shall vex thee, and thou shall be for booty unto them. God says, don't you know that whatsoever a man sows that, he's going to reap. You're going to take it away from somebody else. Somebody's going to take it away from you. In fact, the same crowd, the media Persians, became a great nation also. And then they took Babylon. Gabrias, by subtlety, that night channeled the Euphrates River back out of the canal through which it was flowing through the city. And then his army flowed into the city, and he destroyed it. And again, you have this awful thing. You know, man is bloodthirsty. Man is covetous. God says, verse 8, "...because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee, because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land, of the city, and all that dwell therein." And that, by the way, brings us to the next woe that we have here. Verse 9, Woe to him that coveteth an evil covetousness. Now, I think that you can covet the best gifts. I think that a believer ought to have a desire to want to please God. That kind of covetousness. But this is an evil covetousness. That is, covets that which doesn't belong to him covets his neighbor's property, his neighbor's wife, his neighbor's wealth, covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast plotted shame to thy house by cutting off many peoples, and hast sinned against thy soul. For the stone shall cry out of the wall, and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. Remember the Lord Jesus when they tried to get him, the religious rulers did, tried to get him to quiet that crowd that had come from Galilee that was singing Hosanna to the Messiah. Why, he said, why, if these would keep quiet, the stones are going to cry out. And in other words, this is something that's going to get out. You can be sure of that. That brings us to the third woe, verse 12. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and establish a city by iniquity. And this has to do with murder and pillage and slaughter and violence. That is the method that Babylon used of destruction. And it's the method of warfare, of course. You know, mankind, if you get off and look back at him in his history you have to come to the conclusion that he must be insane the way that he's lived on this earth, the way that he acts. And actually, he is insane. Insane with sin, a sinful nature, so that he can't even direct his paths. So even that which he thinks is right, 
and there's never been a war fought that they didn't think it was right. And always he comes to the conclusion that he's doing the righteous and the right thing. May I say to you, this is God's condemnation of Babylon. But you can stretch that out and bring it up to date and put it down on any modern nation you want to, and it'll fit just like a glove. Now, our time is up, but we're going to finish this chapter next time and probably move into the third chapter. This is another rich section of the Word of God. Until next time, may God richly bless you, my beloved.